A uniformly charged line with net charge positive Q is bent into an arc with radius r and angle phi. What is the electric field at the center of this arc? This charge distribution is symmetric about the center line. And this is positive charge, so by symmetry, the electric field over here must go to the right. So when we look for the electric field, we only have to integrate its uh, x component. So we just have to integrate dE's x component, because we know the y component is just going to be 0. So we'll chop the charge into little pieces. And let's say this is our little piece of charge, dQ. This point charge dQ gives us an electric field dE out of this positive point charge. If this angle here is theta, then that is also theta. I already have an angle phi, but that's this angle right here. The angle over here is not the same as phi, so I'm just naming it a different name, theta. So to find the x component, we just have to multiply the dE by a cosine or a sine. Which one? It's the cosine theta, because the x component we want is adjacent to the angle. The dE is the field produced by a point charge. So we can use Coulomb's law to find the dE. So dE is the kQ, our point charge is dQ. Over r squared, what is the r? What is the distance between the point charge and this location we're interested in? It is the big R. So this is kq over r squared, the charge is dq. And uh, we have to multiply that by cosine theta. Now, if anything is a constant over here, we can take it out. What do you think we can take out? k is a constant we can always take out. And in this case, the r is also a constant, because when we look at a different dq, the distance is still the big R. A different dq would still have a distance big R. So r is a constant. And the cosine theta, is that a constant? If we have a different dq, we would have a different angle. A different dq will give us a different angle. So theta is a variable. We cannot take cosine theta out. So we are taking k out, the r squared out, and what's left in the integral is cosine theta, and we still have dq. We can never take out the dq, because the dq goes with the integral sign. That's for the integration. Now here, we have a function of theta, but we have dq over here. If this is a function of theta, then we would like this to be d theta. So we know how to integrate this. So what we have to do now is to rewrite dq in, and uh, turn it into something d theta. So we want to write dq as something d theta. dq is the charge that's in this segment. So dq is the charge. And that equals to something times d theta. Now, this angle is theta. So d theta is the angle of this little tiny arc. Let's say this little dq is on the arc. And this arc is the arc for this very thin fan shape right here. And this angle is theta. So the angle for this very thin fan shape is the d theta, the delta theta. So dq is the charge on this arc. And d theta is the angle of that arc. So what kind of density do you think goes here? Charge is uh, some sort of dense density times the angle. And this will be the angular charge density. This will be the charge per angle. If we multiply the charge per angle by the angle, we get the charge on that arc. So what do you think is the 
angular density for this arc. If the arc has a net charge of positive Q and an angle, total angle for the arc is phi. The angular charge density would be the total charge divided by the total angle. Charge per angle, that's the angular density. So now I can replace the dq with uh, this. So we still have the k over r squared, and then we'll have cosine theta. dq would be q over phi times d theta. And of course, q over phi will be a constant I can take out. So it'll be k over r squared, and I take out q over phi. And then I will have to integrate cosine theta. What do we get when, I'm, when we integrate cosine theta? We would get sine theta. And what next? For this integral, we have to add the dE's x component for every bit of dq. So instead of writing the plus c over here, we would uh, do the long straight line and write the lower and the upper limits for the integration. Since I'm using this angle that's measured from the midpoint, I'm just going to start from this little bit of dq. Right over here, the angle theta is 0. And if the dq is over there, the angle theta would be half phi. And if I go this way, it's going to be half phi over here also, which means I can say I'm integrating from theta equals to negative half phi to half phi. Or, of course, I can use the lower limit theta equals to 0 and then integrate it to half phi to get the field produced by this half of the arc. And then I know the other half is going to give me the same contribution. Then I can just multiply this by 2, and I'll get the same answer either way. Now, if I use this, I would have kq over r squared phi times, and then this will be sine half phi minus what I get when I plug in the lower limit. That will be sine negative half phi. A sine theta graph look like this. The sine value for half phi and the sine value for negative half phi differs by a sine. The sine negative half phi equals to the negative sine half phi. So this is kq over r squared times phi. And here, this is a sine half phi. This is a minus negative sine half phi. So this will give us twice the sine half phi. Of course, if you do this, you will get kq over r squared phi times, if we plug in the half phi into the sine, sine half phi minus sine 0 times 2. And the sine 0 is 0, so exactly the same thing. Sometimes in a problem like this, instead of having the net charge positive Q, we may be given the linear charge density lambda on the line. In that case, to rewrite the dQ as something d theta, we would have to say the charge dQ equals to the linear charge density lambda times the length. In this case, what do you think is the length? I drew this very thin fan shape for dq right over here. The charge dq is the charge that's in this arc. Lambda is the linear charge density, and the length would be the length of this arc. So how do we find the length of the arc if we know the radius is r and the angle for this very thin fan shape is d theta? The length of the arc would equal to r times 
times the angle of the fan shape, and the angle of the fan shape is、uh, d theta. So all we have to do is to replace the dQ with lambda times r d theta.